The Keweenaw Peninsula is one of the most remote and also beautiful regions of Michigan. Mark joins forces with Captain Travis White. A frequent guest on Fishing 411 TV, Travis specializes in targeting trout and salmon among the remote waters of Lake Superior. In this episode, Mark and Travis cast jerkbaits en route to catching a mixed bag of brown trout, lake trout, and even splay. The action is red hot, in your face, and it will also have you planning a road trip to Michigan's Upper Peninsula. So this morning we got out here and we found 39 degree water right away, um, which is very cold, but that's where we're at, Lake Superior. It's a super cold environment. Um, spring has really just gotten here. And what we're doing is we're getting up as close to shore into these little crick mouths and some of these uh, shallow, flat, rocky areas um, that are gonna warm up quicker with solar radiation and runoff. So that's really the key. You know, we're looking for water that's in the low 40s right now, given everything else is in the you know upper 30s. So we're looking for those little temp differences that make a big difference. Now, if we're going along and we have 40 degree water and we hit a pocket with 41 or 42, a lot of times that's where all the fish are concentrated and sometimes in a very small area. All right. All right, that's what we're looking for. So we're just fishing the edge of this stain and uh, you know, we've had a slow bite, but the water's been warming up. Oh, there you go, Travis. You were... Look at that. That beautiful, is a beautiful, beautiful. sea for Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> he isn't over yet. <laughs> Boy, these fish are powerful when they want to be. No kidding. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Well, we got an eyeball on him now. Yep, that's a so, good fish. That is a very good fish. Woo! <laughs> So I just like to keep my rod tip low because at any moment these fish do like to jump. Oh, there's no question about it. Yeah, it's just such a great feel when these fish come out and crash that bait. You know, what I was doing, I cast up in there, I, I was reeling it kind of slow, and then I'd pause, and that fish hit right on the pause. I mean, that's classic jerk bait fishing at its finest. Nope, he's going for under the boat. <laughs> Looking for a shadow to hide in. Yeah, he's out in the open now, he's exposed. Well, you know, that's a good point. You know, the reason he was where he was had everything to do with that stained water. Even though it's shallow and clear here, you know, he felt comfortable feeding where we where we hooked into him. I'm thinking we can get serious here much right now. Nice. There we go. Nice awesome, job. Mark. <laughs> Look at that beautiful oh, fish, Travis. Yeah, beautiful thank fish. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, this is a fine specimen. <laughs> 
So this is a Lake Superior brown trout. These are all C for Ellen strain. You can see he's missing his adipose fin. Um, this was a stocked fish, and right now these fish are being stocked over in Wisconsin. And to get to where we're at right now, this fish had to swim, you know, maybe 150 miles <laughs> down the shoreline and around the corner to get to us up here in the Keweenaw. So just beautiful. He hit that bait just perfect. So basically the knot we're tying on here is what they call a no-slip loop knot. And there's many different types of no-slip loops. The reason we're tying this no-slip loop knot is to give this bait a little extra action. Now you could easily get away with using a snap here and that allows you to change your baits relatively quickly. However, with this no-slip loop, um, what this does is it takes a little bit less weight off the nose of this bait. So it's not sitting like this in the water. It's gonna get a little more of a horizontal suspend and also, that loop allows the bait to kick side to side much more freely than if we had a snap or even just a, a standard clinch knot tied to that split ring. Um, so that's my preference for fishing these jerk baits. The only downside is that you're, you're relatively committed to fishing this bait. Um, so you want to make sure you've got a bait you've got a little confidence in. Special considerations are provided by Trailmaster Trailers and Daiwa Corporation. Special considerations are provided by Procure, ruthlessly effective bait sense. There he is. Question is whether that could possibly be the same fish or not. I'm almost thinking a, se a second fish. You know, I had just missed the fish and I uh, cast him into the same spot and, uh, and instantly got another bite. So who can tell for sure, but uh, these fish can be very, very aggressive at times. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Come on, baby, play yourself out. There we go. Thanks, Travis. Look at nice that. Pet, Mark. Look at that. Look at here. <laughs> Travis, thank you for sharing one of your pet fish with me, man. Put them there last night. Oh, these things are so pretty and they're so much fun to catch. You know, when you're using light tackle and the rod in your hand and feel the bite, watch the fish slash at the lures, it really is exciting. I mean, I've caught a lot of brown trout in my life. This is the first one I ever caught on a jerk bait. Very That's cool, awesome. Man. Very cool. Such you a got, fun way to get them. You got me, I'm hooked. Uh, no pun intended, <laughs> I am definitely hooked. That is so much fun. These fish are sure making a great living in Lake Superior. You know, if you look at the quality of that fish and how fat it is, you know, there's absolutely no uh, shortage of food out here for them in the shallow water environment. I had so much fun with him. Whoa, look at that. A little observation here to share with folks. Um, almost everything we've fished today has been what I would describe as classic brown trout water. Creek mouse, stained water, um, fishing the stained plumes, and that's where we've been having our action. Um, we're running from spot to spot, and Travis pulls us into a place, and I commented when we got here, I goes, Travis, why would you even stop here? I wouldn't even give this a second look. But it's just a little small outcropping of rock surrounded by sand. I make a couple casts, bam, I got a fish on. But the interesting thing is there's a very small piece of structure here that's holding fish, uh, colder water uh, than what we've been fishing, and certainly uh, clearer water than what we've been fishing. So. I just find it real interesting, and like I said, I would have never stopped here. Thanks for Travis picking this spot and, and pulling in here because I'd have blown right by this. I didn't, never gave it a second look. Yeah, so that's right, Mario. That's a good point. This spot sure doesn't look like much when you pull up to it. We've got an extensive white sandy beach, and it gradually transitions to rock. But what I've noticed in the past is that we've got a little bit of an irregularity in the shoreline here, so it's almost a 90-degree point that comes out. Um, and what that does is it creates a little pocket that, that sort of traps warmer water. And as you can see, our wind's blowing us into shore right now. That's a key point, uh, you know, a key consideration today is that all the warmer surface water that's happening today with the sun radiating is kind of accumulating in this tiny little nook. And that nook just so happens to coincide with a few pieces of structure that aren't very big, but can hold a lot of fish when those right conditions are present. A little wrap there. He's a little bit of wrap. It looks like he's yep. a, Oh, there he comes. <laughs> there he comes. There he comes. He got something there on his side, a little booger on his side. Yeah. So he got a blemish, but. Uh... Boy, they're scrappy. We got a couple good jumps out of him. Oh. There we go. There we go. Nice, nice job, Travis. Thank you. Nice job. Travis, Travis, man, you got yourself a beautiful fish there. That is gorgeous. Look at the <laughs> spots on that one. Oh, they're just absolutely drop dead gorgeous. Aren't they? And catching them on light tackle, jerk bait? It's a blast. Does it get much more fun than that? <laughs> no. That is exactly what we came all the way to the Keweenaw to experience. Oh, these are awesome fish. That's another uh, planter from Wisconsin. You can see he's missing his adipose. And you know, we haven't caught a lot yet to see, but these fish all have character. You know, this one's got a, quite a scar on the backside here, not pretty, but um, 
you know, the spotting, the coloration, they just vary, you know, from one to the next. Yeah, there's no question about it. Awful, you know, a lot of silver to them. That's an indicative of the Cephalorum strain. They yeah. tend to be more silver, almost like salmon. In fact, a lot of people will look at those and they misrepresent them. They think there's another species. Some people even think they're Atlantic salmon. Yep. <laughs> but, they're, but they are not. They are uh, brown trout. Right. We hear that all the time up here. Someone said, we got an Atlantic, and I, we know right well what it was. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, just gorgeous. Very cool. Well, let's let that guy swim so we can right. uh, catch him again another day. That sounds good. Well, there's a couple different strains of brown trout that are commonly stocked into the Great Lakes. Uh, these fish we've been catching here today are from Wisconsin, and Wisconsin has chosen to go with Cephorellum brown trout. They grow a little bit bigger. Uh, they're a little bit more silvery, not as defined in their spots and their markings. Um, and they also wander a lot. The other strain is called wild rose. They tend to be a little bit more of a homebody, and you hear people talk about browns being football shaped or a little short and fat. That's the wild rose that tends to be like that. Their spots are a little bit more defined, and they look a little bit more like the classic brown trout. They're both great species, uh, but the cephorellum by far gets bigger. Michigan used to stock a lot of cephorellum brown trout, and uh, they were caught commonly in places like Ludington and Manistee and Frankfort, Michigan. I was fortunate enough to fish and catch a really big one with my buddy Dale Voice. Uh, 34 pounds, four ounces was the fish that Dale reeled in. Just an absolute monster fish. And uh, the reference to that is that these fish live so long that they do have the potential to get really, really big. And it's important to understand that the Lake Superior fishery here, this stocking that's going on here is in its infancy. It's relatively new, and so these fish haven't had time to grow super big here. Now, will they get as big in Lake Superior as they did in Lake Michigan? I don't know, let's wait and see. But the good news is they live long enough, if they can find enough to eat, you potentially could see 30 pound brown trout coming out of Lake Superior. Wouldn't that be cool? Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems and Stryker Brands. Go early, go late, go prepared. Additional considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Trolling without a fishhawk is called boating. Eagle Claw presents the 411 on fishing. You know, one of the types of fishing that I absolutely love to do is leg core fishing. And if you've ever watched Fishing 411 before, you've probably seen us pull leg core, whether it's for trout or salmon or maybe even walleyes. Leg core is just a great presentation for targeting suspended fish over deep water. And what I like is I like to team up my leg core with a quality reel. On Fishing 411, we've been fishing the Saltus, Daiwa Saltus reel for quite some time now. And let me tell you, this reel has just overly impressed me. One of the things that's super nice about this reel is the fact that it has 22 pounds of drag pressure. So when you're fighting those big king salmon and there's a lot of power on the end of that line, this reel can handle those fish. Another thing that I really like about this reel is the gear ratio. Now this Saltus in the 40 and 50 class has a 6.4 to 1 gear ratio. What that means is simply it just picks up a lot of line. When you have a lot of line like leg core out and you're fishing a 5, 6, 7, maybe a 10 color of leg core, I want to be able to reel that line in very quickly to change out colors or even fighting fish. It's basically picking up 47.2 inches of line for every rotation of the reel. That's a really nice feature to have in a reel. Basically when the Saltus reel was designed, it was a reel that was going to last for your entire lifetime. So if you're looking for a leg core reel that's going to last you a lifetime, and you're going to have a lot of fun using it, you want to look at the Saltus series from Daiwa. All right, Travis. <laughs> Boy, we found some fish today. You know, one of the things doing this is you'll find those little pockets where, you know, all of a sudden you found the whole haystack. <laughs> we are looking, covering a lot of water, looking for that needle in a haystack. Oh, wow. Ooh, ooh, look at here. We got something different we going got, on here. No? We got a variety of fish here. Look at this. This looks like a nice spike, I think. Wow. Definitely something different. <laughs> wow. Look at that. That is a beautiful splake. So that's one of the beauties of fishing this time of year is you never know what you're going to hook into. So you just never know. That fish fought just like a brown. It even jumped and splashed. But when we got him up close, we saw those orange fins you can see there. You know, the splake live in these shallow rocky areas just like the brown trout, except they never leave these types of areas unless the water temperatures force them out. You know, so you can find the splake in these same types of areas all summer. And fortunately, you know, we have these fish scattered around the Keweenaw and all of Lake Superior, just like the brown trout. So it's one more fish that adds to the variety and excitement of not knowing what that bite is. They hit a jerk bait just the same. All right here, you know, you, you don't need a huge boat. You get out, explore the shorelines, and you'll find fish like this. Oh, shoot. Did you have a, you had one on too? Yeah. Oh my goodness. 
another double header. I kind of knew I was going to get bit on this one because uh, he had bumped it in the last cast, so I kind of knew he was going to be there. Oh, come on, little guy. There. There we go. Oh. Man, Webb, we had a day. We are having so much fun doing this. So much fun. The thing with jerk baits is that there's an action you're trying to achieve, and it's not difficult to achieve, but a lot of people don't understand. Um, what you're trying to do is create slack in the line. So you pop the, the lure, you move it a little bit, then you push your rod back towards the lure to create slack, then you pop it again. And what that does is each time you do that, the lure turns a different direction. So when you pop it, it goes this way, then it goes this way, then it goes this way. And what that's creating is that dying minnow presentation. Well, of course, jerk baits are long and skinny, just like smelt, and that's what these fish are eating is smelt. And so it goes without saying that a jerk bait is a very good lure for this type of presentation and for this type of fishing. So you have to, you know, you have to caution yourself that when you're doing this to make sure you're pushing your rod back towards the bait every time you pop it in order to give that slack line to bring the life to the jerk bait. So this casting isn't for everybody. You know, you've got to make a lot of casts. You're, you know, you're out in the elements here, casting into the wind, casting with the wind. One of the keys to success with that program is selecting a jerk bait that you can cast a country mile. Um, one of the types of baits we're looking for is something with, uh, you know, a suspending type of profile where it's got a weight transfer system. And what I'm talking about here is if you look in this bait, you can see these ball bearings that kind of shift from one end to the other. What that helps me do is when I throw this bait into the wind, it gives this bait as much momentum as possible to get as far as possible on that cast. So a good idea, you know, if you're fishing out in big water like this and you don't have great calm conditions, is to dig through the box and find the bait that you can get the furthest cast consistently into the wind with. Get out from underneath that boat again. That's the problem before. That's All a right, nice here he comes. Here he comes. There we go. Okay. Awesome. He had no problem gobbling that jerk bait. Look at that. That is a lot of fun. Very cool. Special considerations are provided by Precision Trolling Data and the Lake St. Clair Walleye Association. Special considerations provided by the Ultimate Sport Show Tour, Michigan's elite sport shows. A jumper. Look at him jump. Can't catch up to this fish. He's jumping, jumping, jumping. <laughs> <laughs> Look oh. at this fish. This fish thinks he's a tarpon. <laughs> Oh man! That is that cool? That is a riot. That is so cool. <laughs> I'm having so much fun. Okay, let me see if I can get him to come for you. I'll walk him right on the surface here for you, Travis. There, we there go. you go. Nice job. Nice job. That's a nice fish. So far, we're dealing with fish that are about the same year class. Yep. Um, obviously, you get some bigger ones. Oh, absolutely. These Ooh. fish should go up over 30 inches. Uh, that's an impressive brown trout, anywhere you catch it. But, I mean, let's be honest, Lake Superior is a pretty sterile environment. Right. And so the growth rates have got to be a little slower here, I'm guessing. Yeah, you know, I'd estimate with these fish, you know, the first couple of years, they might get three or four pounds. After that, it's maybe less than a pound a year. Let's talk a little bit about the biology of brown trout. And why I'm so excited about brown trout, why I think they're an exceptional species, it comes down to longevity. Most of the, you know, the salmonids that are planted in the Great Lakes are Pacific salmon, um, cohos or chinook. Their lifespan is three to four years and they're gone. They spawn and they die. That's not the case with brown trout. And while brown trout don't have great success in natural reproduction, their lifespan is incredible. Six, eight, 10, as much as 15 years. So while they're expensive to raise in, you know, in a hatchery situation, once we release those fish into the Great Lakes, they live for a long time and they provide a fishery for a very long time. The longevity more than makes them a great bargain for the Great Lakes fishermen. He hit it on the pause. Oh, that's a big one, Mark. That is what we're looking for. Come on, baby. I don't know look if you got a good look, sizzle. but... <laughs> Look at that drag sizzle, Ooh, baby. That don't make your heart go pitter pat. I'm telling you, that definitely make you go pitter pat. Oh my goodness! Did you see the fish? That's a big one, Mark. <laughs> I didn't see him. I, I I saw him flash, but I did not get a good look at him. I okay. would put this fish well into the upper 20-inch class. It's significantly bigger than what we've been hooking into. We're gonna tighten it up just a little bit here and try and gain some line on him here. The good news is all that running should have helped, uh, should have pooped him out a little bit. That's the goal here at least. Well, you know, the afternoon bite has been so good. The morning bite was really 
pretty tough and honestly we worked really hard so I guess if you're not a morning riser, you maybe find yourself a, a good brown trout fisherman, huh? <laughs> yeah, you don't you have really to get up early. You really don't need to be a morning riser here. <laughs> That's a big fish, Mark. Wow. Come on, Bubba. Stick with me here. That's Stick what we're looking with me. for. Oh, I tell you what, he's giving us everything he's got. He's hooked in the gill plate, which is kind of a scary thing. Travis, if I was you, I'd run right up here and see if we can't get him on the bow. Yep. Because he is very lightly hooked. Oh, go. you got long arms, kid. Thank you so much. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Man, that's that a is big a nice fish. fish. That fish is well into the double digit pounds, Mark. Yes! That's... Is that fun or what? Oh, that's as my good as it gets. Wow, Mark. Is that something special or what? That is a giant Lake Superior brown. <laughs> that is, that's just a good brown anywhere. Um, yeah. I can't thank you enough, man. That has just been an incredibly good fish. It's been great. Oh my goodness. That's a class of fish we've been starting to see more and more of, you know, well, the last year or two. Your future's bright, man. You're going to see a lot more of these in the future. There's it's no incredible. <laughs> when you start talking about the number of fish they've stocked, you know, you're approaching, you know, over three quarters of a million fish. Yeah. I mean, that's going to look really bright for your future, man. It's significant. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was going to be up here chartering with you. Yeah. <laughs> so. Hey, my name's Mark Romanek. You've been watching Fishing 4 on 1. Get a chance, come to Lake Superior, check out Travis White. I think you'll find that he can put you on some beautiful silver fish. Closed captioning is provided by Lakeside Motorsports, Michigan's premier marine and power sports company. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, Lorenz Electronics, Starcraft Marine, Yamaha Outboards, Yakima Bait Company, Niagara Falls, USA, Smooth Moves, and Jay's Sporting Goods.